that happens. Uh, sometimes you do come quick on the predictions, but Radish and Java are now fighting to get into the top three. Java again, sticking with the Hattori, a surprise for the Java fans out there. But it is a good surprise. Solid spear play, solid sword play. Of course, we knew the sword play was going to be solid, but I'm really surprised by his spear today. It seems like he's doing all of the things that a very seasoned spear player should. He has some solid follow-ups off of that sidelight. He's changing it up. He's using all of the good things that the weapon has. He's minimizing the sort of... Uh, missing pieces that the weapon has just like any weapon out there but spear he's able to get around that make the weapon look so strong and so effective in his hands yeah and it's impressive because like obviously when you're going from bodvar to hattori you've got the carryover of the sword but he's not leaning on the sword and the spear the spear is just there it's really been the spear play from java that's been the standout thing from his hattori play yeah, I'm glad you mentioned possibly leaning on the sword because, like, that's what a lot of Bodvar players do. It's most of the damage is built up with their sword. Time to KO, swap over to the hammer. So you thought that maybe that's the way Java is going to play Hattori as well. Do most of the damage on the sword and swap over to the spear for anything else. But really, spear play is shining so brightly. Even on Apocalypse with, uh, it seems like the world ending behind them. Oh, Radish's first stock is going to be ending right in front of us. And Java is going to go up. Up early in this one. Yo, but Radish did do some great damage, had the orb plays, has the downlight recovery on luck, and he gets his pick of weapon. He's already priming that. Yeah, he's gonna throw away those gauntlets for the orb to try to get some damage built up on the second stock of Java. There's a weapon spot coming in. Sword for Java. Nice spot dodge into the gravity cancel delight recovery between these two players here on Apocalypse. Is there much history between these two? I'm actually not sure. I'd there might be a fair bit. Let me look at that. Okay, there actually is quite okay. a bit in terms of all events, community, and officials. Heavily favoring Java, not the biggest surprise there. Overall, it is a 6-2 to two career matchup between Java and Radish. Favoring Java in official tournaments, it's actually 1-0 favoring Radish. Oh, okay. Well, considering this is official, maybe things looking good for Radish. I was going to say there's a hope, there's a chance, but... Obviously, there's more than that going for Radish, but Java comes in, gets that gravity cancel down light for the punish, and he has gotten a big lead over ja uh, over Radish. Coming in here for the edge guard, Radish at the weapon disadvantage. There is a weapon spot. He goes over to it. Java was doing a great job covering it, but Radish was able to dodge through the side air and actually pick up the weapon spot. Yeah, Java, his, he's just oh, hit big. Oh! oh! And he is just going to take that one, finish it up right there. 466 damage. That is 155 and one-third damage per stock, largely off the back of that neutral signature that hit in orange and the weapon toss that finished it up. They're going into the map bands, but I really want to see that graph because I swear the last, like, 40 seconds of it was Java not getting hit and hitting Radish. That, that, uh graph has to have been climbing for radish and yeah you can see a flat line on java's stock and radish's final stock there just going straight up man look how flat that is just so flat i feel like i'm looking out not in west texas they actually have hills over there i'm looking like at like Arizona, south i'm looking mesas. at south texas baby i'm looking at uh katy texas west of houston shouts out Seeker ranch high school what's up <laughs> go cougars what's up uh, but yeah, that is, I mean, it, it's just untouchable Three, from Java. Two, and now we're getting right on into the next one. Oh, okay. Starts off <laughs> okay. very aggressive. All right. Java feeling really good, apparently, after that last victory. The last time they met in an official tournament was Autumn Championship 2021. And uh, Java might be a little angry, holding on to that anger, letting it build because he got 2 would in that tournament. That was pretty early on, too. Yeah, I was going to say, that's uh, before we get into the best of fives, which is usually around the top 32 section of things. Java, of course, now gets a little bit more opportunities here as, against Radish, but Radish also has three opportunities at least to try to get this out over Java. Java taking a lot of damage here from Radish's orb. Radish went actually down into the elimination side of the bracket pretty early as well. It was 3-0 against Experience in winner's round one, so that was oh. two sets before top eight went down and then had to fight several players, fought Vocal, no fought Wubs, shot, fought Meg D as well before getting into the top eight. And now Java, oh. he's up Radish, that's gonna do it. The side air that deep into the push off column, that close to the blast zone, right when Radish turned red. We're gonna see again, some solid KO efficiency right there. 
you saw him go for the D-Light Gravity Cancel Neutral Heavy. We mentioned this yesterday in South America because they hit it more than like any other region. There you see perfect example of where it can be a little bit tight to pick it up. Yeah, definitely not going to hit every single time you throw it out, but Radish hitting Java right now. Java back to the spear, man. That spear was the highlight of that final stock or, or of that first stock where you got that uh, that read into the gravity cancel downline side air. Oh man, offstage opportunity. Radish did throw away the gauntlet, so he can't really keep the pressure going. And Java gets back up onto the stage. Great dodge through that D light from Radish that came out. That could have pushed Java a little bit into the offstage. Java was able to punish oh. that one, but he's gonna eat the spirit bomb. Oh man, that's gonna be one I want to see slow mo because it looked like he avoided the uh, the hitbox of the recovery from Java by going up into that down signature before throwing that one down onto Java's head. Back to the gauntlets. Java with the sword needs more damage before we can think about the KO. We haven't seen too much side light action from Rage, not too much down light action either. It's mostly been like single aerial hits, like a side air, maybe a neutral air, but beyond that, not too much gauntlet play coming out from Radish. It's been a lot of that orb. Java retreating over to the wall. Something that Java has done so well today. Ooh, the dodge. We might see him continue. Oh, okay. Double recovery. Almost taken off the top. Almost for another. the stocks. This could be dangerous. Okay. You saw these sweat beads come out from Java. He was very fortunate that he was close enough to that wall that he could drift over and get that wall touch. Because otherwise, he might have just fallen there. Does get the side air. Didn't take too much damage. Opportunity here for Java to take another one. If I'm Java, I'm not going to any uh, map that has tiny sidewalls because one of the things Java was doing so well was recovering really low on the wall, knowing exactly how far away he was from his opponent, how far his jumps were going to take him. So by recovering low, that gives you so much time to react to anything your opponent is going to throw out. If we were not on Demon Island, I highly doubt Java was going to get KO'd by that Spirit Bomb. He would have seen it coming in time. He would have been able to do something to avoid it or evade it, anything like that would have probably come out if we were on a different map. Yeah, I mean, you got so much more room to play with uh, when you got those longer walls. Java's been sitting on those walls a lot, too. We saw him hit three exclamation points a little while ago and uh, could hit him again here as the side air comes out. That's two exclamation points. Java has not touched a wall for a oh, hot minute, but he gets no down safely. Punish from Radish on that. Oh, that could have been the game. He's still in the lead. Is there going to be a weapon toss over the corner? Side light, side air will do it. You see the recovery for Celebration. Radish tying this one up. Playing that very safely, sat further back. Knew that Java was going to go for the hitbox with the uh, recovery, right? Was trying to peek over the corner. You saw him drift into the stage, and Radish outspaces all of it to get that side sick. Or sorry, side light, side air. Yeah. He eats that one. If, again, if we would have been on any other map, because you saw it shortly after that, his ability to recover low and be, like, right on the bottom side of that wall to get the touch, refresh the jumps while giving him plenty of time to react. It was so good against so many other players that Java has come up against today, especially if they're not really going for any long extended edge guards. If they're just going to throw out one move, that gives them so much power there. They can throw that out, then they miss, they retreat. That gives Java plenty of time to get back onto the main platform. So his recoveries, they're not free by any means, but they're much safer because they are so delayed. And that's why we are going to be going over to Small Fortress of Lion, which is a little bit more wall space for Java to play with. The big thing, of course, is that you can't go underneath it. But Java hasn't really done that, so I don't think he cares. For, okay. I thought he was going <laughs> to be a little bit slow to pick up that weapon. I thought he wasn't going to touch it. First two weapons going to Java here. Radish was actually playing that really defensively, just going to the soft platform and really camping there, waiting for the third weapon spawn to come in. He found it. It is an orb. Nice oh. punish, but somehow the side air is going to drop. That happens when you pick up that goofy little D-Light right as their hurt box comes over the corner. Yeah, he, he input the jump into it and, uh, of course, jumped too high for the follow-up. Nice off the weapon toss. Doesn't connect with the gravity cancel side light, though. Avoids it this time. Gets three in a Whoa! row. Java's going to get the first stock in game number three. That had to be such an early KO. I, Radish had to be an orange, right? Yeah, that, that was fast. He was just getting elevated up hit floor after floor of spear recoveries. Just the nice little D-lights over the corner. Now he's going to actually go in, get below Radish, and go for recovery. That's like a classic Kaina 
bode bar play where you think it's going to be a vertical attack from above but no he fast falls right through you gets underneath and essentially does almost a completely stacked sword recovery yeah simple in eu also does that like i'm starting to think it's just a bode bar thing to do he goes for it again that weapon toss to set up for his spear downlight that might just be a java play Here's the side light. We saw the dodge come out. That's why Java. Oh, is he, oh, oh, I thought he was going to do it again. He almost did, but Radish was ready for it this time. Had the dodge down. Gets a little bit of a punish, but he doesn't hit the signature. Java gets disarmed, but Radish needs the KO. D light into the recovery. Radish going high. Going to throw that weapon up. Go back over to the orb that he is in the orange. You saw after that slide kick, you saw him turn orange. He's going to be pretty deep in the orange. Okay, nice four piece coming out from Radish. Yeah, that was a great read from him. Stood still, did a second end light, which led to extra damage on the Java because he burned his dodge coming back into it. That stack side light. Java even goes for the side light off the stage. He waits on this one. I didn't expect the down air coming. I thought it was going to be a recovery city. He was trying to reaction to that dodge down from Radish. Side air nice. and Radish is going to fall last stock here in game number three for Radish. This one could be starting to wind down here. Radish is actually going to push really hard to try and maybe catch Java in a moment where a weapon has left his hands. The next one is about to leave his hands, and he's not able to pick up the weapons because he got hit away from it. But no, that could have been disaster. We could have seen him get hit while a lot of those inner movement options were gone from Java. That weapon toss is going to go over his head. He threads the needle to get between the weapon toss and Radish. There's the side air for the KO, juggling these. Just delaying weapon spawns. It's not about decision making with which one he wants because it's an orb or an orb. Arguably, he could go for the one that's slightly less damage, less likely to get knocked out of his hands, but not too big of a concern here as oh. he hits the ground pound. Java actually almost went into that. He was able to get deep enough into the push off column to get away from it. Java being very careful about he, how he's he initiates facing. onto Radish because he's taking some damage here. We are now even and actually no Java's behind Radish. Yeah, Java took a lot in that offstage engagement and that fight back onto the stage. Radish does such a good job covering those corners. Good side air to punish the whiff recovery. Radish stand below. Sweat beats come out. Java gets back down safely. He goes deep. That side stick went off stage and he said, I want to get away yeah. from this area. I'm going to fast fall down. Anything that Radish is going to throw out, especially that D-Sig does not have the range to reach me down here. Radish really wants to make sure he's got orbs on orbs. Throws away the gauntlets priming. Is it going to be the Sig? Is it going to be a dare? Nope. Misses the side Sig. Hits a recovery, but he's got so much threat on Java right now. Even with that Java moving back to the main stage, you saw him sword recovery away from the stage. He's worried about anything Radish has right up against that side wall. Ooh, that side light is going to be punished by a side air from Radish. It's going to take quite a bit to get back. Holding his dodge as long as he can. He didn't really have to burn it. Ooh. No punish there. I thought we might get the GCD light. Maybe he didn't think he had the range to reach it. Yeah, I mean, they were both uh, whiffing a little bit there. You saw Java spot dodge through the side air from Radish. He's got the sword in hand, needs more damage. He's sweat beating, he's gonna fall. Radish is up 2-1. That weapon toss was almost so clutch. That would have probably interrupted any immediate, I can't believe he got through that, that was crazy. Yeah, right. That would have interrupted probably any immediate punish that could have come out from Radish. There's that D-Light recovery, getting the second stock. Right here, you see the sweat beats. That weapon toss was almost perfect. Oh, that would have knocked Radish just far enough away to give Java the safe landing. He even threw it down at that 45 degree angle, attempting to read exactly where Radish was gonna be. Really tough throw from Java. And now he's on tournament point. He could get knocked out by the underdog PR number 12, Radish. Java's, oh my gosh, look at that first stock from Radish, though. That was the uh, triple recoveries from Java. He started off so strong, but really it was Radish clutching it out with the orb play. 463 damage put out. Now, looking at the breakdown between weapons, it's a little bit more even for Java. 247 with the spear compared to the 180 on sword. But man, Radish is that orb gameplay. That's why we've mentioned several times that, like, we're not super stoked on the gauntlets which if he's able to keep himself off of the gauntlets which it seems like he's able to do he's able to guarantee orb a lot in that kit we've had a lot of different players be extremely successful in this game while really only playing one of the weapons in their legends kit Koslix is a big one i mean even kind of 
in the more beginning stages, and even here recently before the major switch over to the cannon, was a big hammer player. And even with the Zul pick, the cannon was the shining star. The axe wasn't bad, but the cannon was the shining star. That seems to be what Radish is doing here. That's why we have Radish on the Petra pick, because of that orb. And it's so fascinating because, like, we've seen many Petras throughout this weekend, uh, especially, again, like, talking about the, the shift in meta after the hammer nerfs. And yet, most of the Petras, the conversation has been around gauntlets. Yep. That's been the big thing. We talk about the Wushong gauntlets. We talk about the cross gauntlets. We talk about the gauntlets. But Radish is like, I don't even care about that weapon. I want orb, and the orb is looking really good. Java was thinking long and hard about how to respond to that. That's one of the reasons why we're sitting here talking so long, but he's finally locked in. We're going to get right on into game number four. Uh, do you think it's going to be a map change? You know, I don't think there was really map issues there. Those sidewalls really didn't play into, I think, anything that happened too much. We didn't see edge guard situations too much. We did see a desig over the corner. Jabba was able to get through it. I don't think anything would have changed if we would have been on a map with larger sidewalls. Even that soft platform, other than like the very beginning when Radish retreated to it as Jabba pushed in, other than that, that soft platform didn't come into play too much. And we can see that based on the stages that they're banning right now. Small Fortress of Lions is still in there. Miami Dome is in there and Small Enigma is in there. Maps with several soft platforms, but we're actually going back into the map striking because maybe some minds have been changed. Small Brawl Haven taken off the board. No soft platforms. Get him out of here. Okay. He's going to ban Small Fortress. I expect him to want platforms. His Spear Realm, his Small Enigmas were both looking really good. But it looks like he's keeping Apocalypse on the board. And I got to believe it's going to be Apocalypse. Yep. For game number four against Radish. We're still going to have long enough sidewalls, especially if you're Java and really have such a mastery over, I want to recover on like this bottom half of the wall. I'm going to make sure my hurt box Three, never goes two, above one, that area wall. until I'm actually ready to do it. I'm not going to blasters recovery and end up riding up that wall, peeking over the corner and getting punished with a D-Light. That's still one of the things that I'm just so surprised that Java is able to do. He's able to do it consistently and not a lot of other people behave that way on the edge. Well, here we go into game number four. Java forced to use the sword for a little bit. Radish already on his comfort weapon of the orb. And he's again keeping Java to the outside. Backs up a little bit as Java swaps over to the spear. Doesn't hit the down light. That neutral light, that's going to turn Ooh. Java orange. You saw him hesitate there for a second because that neutral signature came out from Radish. A lot of active frames on that signature. You try to spot dodge that, uh, that's a no way Jose, my friend. Yeah, I mean, that can just lock down so much airspace. Java misses the ground pound. That's the okay. second time he's gone for that side light. Wait into the side light off the stage. Double. He goes for the double D light. Oh, oh, that was so close. Petra does have quite a bit of defense on herself with her stats. That might have been the saving grace there for Radish. I mean, she's definitely known for her strength, but the defense is not something to uh, shake a stick at as uh, clearly it kept her alive here in game number four. Java needed that KO too. He needs this momentum swing because he is on the back foot. Do that recovery, still not enough. That one will do it. Picked up the spear after the little bit of the weapon toss and ended up making contact with Radish. Going back over to the sword to start off this second stock from Radish. Now he is going to spawn back in. That means his next weapon pickup is going to be a spear. Dude, I got to give so much credit to Radish for equalizing stocks so quickly. It happened in game one, game two, and game four, where, like, he loses his stock first, but has enough damage on Java that he just comes in, downlight recovery, immediately equalized. A lot of time in between the moves that Java is throwing out. He's being very careful how he chooses to move in. There's that sidelight. This time he goes for the jump Nair rather than the sidelight off the stage. I don't know if that's a right side versus left side thing or just trying to shake things up a little bit. Trying to mix up those reads a little bit. Neutral light, Nair. A little bit more gauntlet play coming out from Radish. Doesn't want the orb to get too stale or too obvious against Java as he goes down, gets that recovery on the dodge up from Java. Getting a little bit more damage put out. Just kind of trading hit for hit. Back and forth between these two players. Tries to go for a little bit something cheeky there with the GC neutral signature. Java did find a single hit for the punish. Okay. Radish finding the recovery. That at least sent Java off screen. Radish with a nice lead here. 
who jumps over the end sig radish in great position to get a massive lead here throws out the sig just to keep java on that outside wall long enough wall here he gets back up safely okay he picked up that side air as well hit the first one off of the bounce from the down air found the second swipe of the second side air he's evening up this damage d light side air weapon toss has to stick out didn't get the ko oh! and sig wait and the weapon toss just in case java gonna go up here in game number four what a classic katori edge guard yeah i feel like since Good gravity lens, cancels were put into the game people were doing that edge guard right there where they face towards the stage gc insig right towards the top radish would have had to been like probably picture perfect to avoid that or maybe not even maybe java hit it low enough where it covered the top side of the wall it covered the bottom side of the wall so there was virtually no way to avoid that because of all the things that radish had to burn to get back but at the same time like it's been a hot minute since we've seen too many hattori's in competitive play so we haven't seen them really going for it that uh radish might be keeping that in his mind Java at the weapon disadvantage he's yep. just gonna run away you saw that weapon spawn and that's the only reason he moved toward radish he went straight for it and got hard punished for it as well. Radish is getting hits onto Java. Nice double end light. Needs a lot more than that, though. Doesn't get the read. Gets a recovery. Doesn't go for more. Setting up for the edge guard. Oh, he side air towards the stage! Java had to avoid the side air towards the stage by moving away, which meant he couldn't get back to touch the wall to reset his jumps. Radish moves on, knocking out Java from the tournament. 3-1 in the elimination semifinals. Another upset as Radish overcomes the higher seed. Uh, but you did There's point out. Yeah. 